Greetings and salutations fellow humanoids and welcome back to our Let's Play series of Hearts of Iron 4 using the Road to 56 mod as the Kingdom of Italy, episode 4. We just finished the peace conference in which we partitioned what was left of the German Reich. Now <clears throat> we got a fair amount of territory to our name and also we puppeted Germany ourselves. Much to my dismay I discovered that the one in charge of this puppet is evil mustache man himself, which doesn't make much sense. He should have self-medicated himself with lead before we made it to Berlin. But anyway, uh, that's detail. Now, the Allies, in all of their gloriousness, have formed West Germany. And if I'm not mistaken, they're going to gobble up a whole bunch of my territory without asking for it. And if they do that, I won't be too happy about it. But hey, we can't control everything in the game. Now then, uh, with the war over, there's a whole bunch of troops from different nations here as they will all be exiled and heading back home. Let's start uh, remaking some lines here because uh, we have to get ready for the next war or next wars, plural. So first thing I like to do is to uh, promote the RIMP, the Royal Italian Mounted Police. They did a great job keeping the uh, resistance down. So let's make sure to expand them all the way through. We have some spare experience and quite so. So let's make sure to max them out. This will increase their suppression overall to 60, which is amazing. This way they will have a lot more suppression to their name, which is good. It will be a lot more effective in reducing resistance in occupied countries. Speaking of occupation, how is Albania doing? We should see to um, bring Albania under our thumb as, as soon as possible because they might go down a different route and we want to make sure to cover that front at the very least. Now, war with the Allies may be inevitable, uh, but we have to prepare. We may also have to go to war with uh, the USSR. The question is, with whom shall we go to war first? The world stage is now very uncertain. With the fall of Germany and as soon as 1939, this game is only getting started. Now, as this situation stabilizes itself, I want to fortify Africa. We're going to be drawing some lines here to be to be ready and not be caught with our pants down in the case of a allied uh, offensive. And uh, we also want to make sure to take care of our uh, holdings in East Africa as well. We'll be forming some um, collaboration governments when we're ready because we don't really need that territory to our name. And uh, they could do a lot more with it if we make separate puppet nations under our control. They'll be able to uh, churn out more factories and troops. Si, signore. That being said, let's return the uh, Axumite levies in Africa here. Comandi. Let's make sure to keep an eye on Czechoslovakia as well. Also, Vienna was liberated, but is not a puppet of whoever. So maybe we could do something here. Hmm. Let's make sure that our good friend here, King Zog, stays under our influence. Situation is a little bit uncertain. We have enough political power for a new advisor, and I think we'll go with the Prince of Terror if we have one. Yes, Pietro Koch, right here. So this guy increases our non-core manpower, very good. But what I like too is that he reduces damage to garrisons. So this is a very good uh, advisor to get if you are playing a conquest expansionist nation. Very good for fascists overall. Kingdom of Iraq has capitulated. Now Persia is doing pretty good for itself. And there we have it. Didn't even get a notification for it, folks. West Germany has gobbled up a whole bunch of territory without asking the Italians first. Once again, the Allies are screwing us over. I declare la vendetta. With Germany out of the way too, we have to set our ambitions uh, forth. Now, we want control of the Mediterranean for the most part because we want to restore the Roman Empire. That means a war with the Allies, uh, namely the French and the British, which is a huge problem. Naval dominance in the Mediterranean will not be e easy. We will be hit from both sides uh, with navies that are arguably better than ours. We're going to be working on overhauling our navy, but uh, it's going to be a tough battle. We're definitely going to be investing into naval bombers to compensate because, in my experience, the best way to win the naval battle is with air power. 
Oof. And with the loss of territory, we have lost a whole bunch of factories, which is um, frustrating, to say the least. So let's start expanding our air force. We're going to have to also see about our uh, lack of powered motors national spirit, which is problematic. One thing I would like to do, actually, is to um, prepare a adequate camel corps. The reason being is that North Africa is almost all desert, and uh, we'll be making some templates specifically for that endeavor. So let's get them some armored recon, some maintenance companies, support artillery, support anti-air, and we'll be getting some logistics too to reduce the uh, strain on their supplies. This should, this should make for a pretty reliable desert uh, template, and one must not underestimate the difficulties of a campaign in Northern Africa. Seems that our friend King Zog here is going towards democracy. Oh, what's going on here? So Japan, no, Persia has joined the Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. Because Persia has declared war on the USSR, why would you do that? Well, good luck to them, because that is not going to be an easy feat. No, it's not. Yeah, so the Winter War has officially begun in Finland. However, Finland is much more prepared than historically, because they have Denmark and uh, Sweden on their side. Also Iceland. Brave little Iceland. Public of China has joined the common term. Oh boy, the world stage is becoming interesting, to say the least. Where does Italy fit in there, I wonder. Maybe in our best interest to not join any factions. Let's leave the League of Nations. The League of Nations, whose inability is no longer to be proven, has nevertheless seen fit to condemn our invasion of Ethiopia. We do not need the support or confirmation of the latter to know what is good for Italy. And we should therefore leave it. Gives a whole bunch of political power, that's nice. And it makes sense for a, a role-playing standpoint. Hmm, so we turned the uh, enemy agent to our side. Double agent. Speaking of which, we should really improve our intelligence agency. Civilian upgrade department. And we captured another British operative. <laughs> so with our uh, propaganda ideology boosting in Albania, it should offset the bonus that they are getting to the democracy right now which is a 0.03. We're giving 0.04 to fascism and it's already in the, it's already ahead in terms of uh, political ideology in Albania. We'll try and keep them on our side. All right, we have our first German troops showing up. We're going to make a separate army just for them. Let's call these boys the Teutonic levies. Commandi. For now, we'll keep them in their home country so they don't have to travel too far. Civilian Home Guard. This is new with the Road to 56 mod. So, Counterintelligence plus 0.05. Enemy Operative Capture Chance plus 5%. And Civilian Intelligence to others. That's pretty good. Let's increase it. Japan wants us in our faction. However, we must respectfully decline. Sorry, Hirohito. But Italy dances to her own tune. Definitely not that one. Albania is now going for their focus, the will to fight, which may or may not lead to war against us if they decide to gain an annex goal against us. Now, Albania stands little to no chance against us, but I would rather have them on our side than against us. Especially that if a war breaks out, they will most likely join a potential enemy faction. Also, let's exercise our entire army. As they become reinforced and recruited, we're going to have to make sure they stay in tip-top shape. Oh. Oh. Hold up. So, the United Kingdom just declared war on the, the Imperial State of Persia. The Imperial State of Persia is in the co, uh, the co prosperity sphere. So, basically, they're going to go to war with Japan. That is unfortunate for the Japanese. We're actually completely done with our construction queue. So, let's start another one that's not completely reasonable. Now, Sardinia will be of the utmost importance during the uh, Mediterranean battles to come. So what I want to do is actually start increasing its infrastructure to max and uh, dropping down uh, some radar stations there. We're also going to increase a whole bunch of uh, naval dockyards for construction purposes in the long term. 
And besides that, let's make sure to upgrade infrastructure in PMO. A few civvies and the rest. We're going to make a whole bunch of refineries. We're going to need a lot of oil. That should do it, at least for now. All right, we've left the League of Nations. One thing I want to do first is grabbing a law enforcement idea because I'm really tired of that notification when we get 50 uh, political power. We're going to go for order above all. Very good uh, for the uh, more expansionist nations as well. And good in combination with the Prince of Terror, which reduces damage to garrisons and reduces uh, chance of strikes to 0%, which is amazing because strikes are a pain in the butt when you have low stability and you're at war. So let's grab that. And all that accounted, we should have a 50% reduction to our garrisons. We're going to save a lot of equipment by occupying territory. Now that we have left the League of Nations, we could choose two different paths. We could revive the stress of front, which is to become chummy with uh, France and England. However, considered how we've been treated from them historically and in the game so far, I'm not too fond of this idea. Let's go with the stab in the back, which reduces our uh, war goal time justifying our war, war goal time, but it also it gives a whole bunch of uh, AI-oriented um, bonuses and penalties. This isn't very good for us, but from a role-playing standpoint, it is interesting. Despite all the blood spilled by our brave soldiers during the Great War, the victorious nations gave us little compensation. Depriving us of land populated by Italians, we will correct this injustice and finally achieve the total unification of Italy. You know, somehow I feel like this has happened all over again with the uh, theft of territory in Germany that was under our thumb, not theirs. Unacceptable. Romania has cancelled their non-aggression pact with us. I wouldn't be surprised if a whole bunch of different nations did the same. Also, Mon Mongolia is complaining about our military attaché to Japan. They could piss off. Congo, Leopoldville... Indo-Chinese Union, basically all of the, uh, what you might call it, the French Republic, French Alliance uh, faction has cancelled their non-aggression packs with us. We have no longer any non-aggression packs with anybody. I can't believe we have him as a leader for our puppet nation. That would just not work. Let's prepare a collaboration government in uh, Albania, just in case. Oh, they're going to exile the king, eh? Sounds to me like they're going to flip to democracy. Unacceptable. Let's improve our radar technology. It can be very important in the naval wars to come. Now, against Germany, it was strictly a land and air war. But uh, if we go to war with the Allies, it will become a uh, three-way war. Land, air, and sea. We now have 150 political power. Let's grab ourselves the elusive gentleman. It will reduce the upgrade time it takes, and it also give us an extra operative slot. Amazing. We're done with the mechanized offensive. Now we have to choose a branch to go down with in the superior firepower doctrine. Let's go shock and awe. It, redu it increases the overall soft attack of our army, including, including base troops and artillery, so it's just pure good. It also increases our reconnaissance, and we use recon on all our units. And uh, just pure organization is amazing. And soft attack, hard attack, just an amazing uh, tree to have. We already have some bonuses due to our national focuses we did before, so that's great. Stab in the back is now finished. Let's go with increased wheat production. Various embargoes make our dependence on imported food even more complicated. A major program to shift farmers to wheat production will be implemented. Looks pretty simple, but a monthly population plus 20% and a 5% war support bonus is a pretty darn good focus for 35 days. Let's go with that. Damn, looks like we're n we might not have time to give the uh, ultimatum to Albania. It's a 70 day focus. Curses. Just a little bit too slow. If I had seen what was going on here, I would have done it earlier. But we were kind of preoccupied with Germany, so that's fine. We can can't get them all. Can't get them all. Let's go with Psychological Warfare, which increases our uh, boost ideology effect and also the prepare collaboration government cost. Oh, it's a 105 day focus. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, we're just gonna, we just need a little bit more 
damn, if there, if it was just a little bit longer, we were a little bit ahead, we would have been uh, able to give the ultimatum to Albania and maybe just annex them outright. Anyway, if their ideology flips, we may just stay Jakku in their country instead. Let's get rocket artillery here, because uh, we want to have that as a extra bonus to soft attack uh, when we can. Alright, we have our next operative. Let's go with Angela here, the seducer. Seducers are really good because they have a lower chance of being discovered. And Colombia has joined the Japanese. Oh. This could get interesting. So as you can see, with historical focuses off and Germany losing so early in the war, uh, everything is uncertain and some AI will be behaving in unexpected manner. I'm actually going to drop a save here because I don't want a war to be declared over something I'm not too certain about. And sometimes some focuses can be a little bit uh, misleading, such as Italian ultimatum. We don't know what that means. Do we immediately declare war on Albania if they refuse our demands? Let's see. Now that we got rid of the um, law enforcement law, we have another one popping up every 75 political power. Another damn notification. Now this is about the legal status of women in our country, which is an interesting detail uh, brought in by the mod. So we could enforce patriarchy as a fascist, but uh, I'm not too fond of a less recruitable population. And in our focus tree, we actually have the Nuova Italiana, which kind of expands the roles of women in the military. So uh, following that general thought pattern, let's uh, give limited rights to women. That's right. Mussolini, Il Duce himself, is progressive. We have 15 Alpine divisions to our name. Not bad. They're not the biggest, but they're pretty strong. Got improved isometric radar, which increases the uh, options in terms of radar stations. I do like using radars in this game. Really helps out in forms of detection, both for air and sea. We have a huge deficit in small arms. We should really uh, get on this as soon as possible. Ordini. Finland has capitulated. Poor Finland. All right, now we have <laughs> now we have another notification at a hundred political power for global order. So we're gonna have to see the justification for war. Hey, <sighs> ooh, a tank template. SB artillery. Oh, not bad. All right, the ultimatum to Albania is complete. Let's see what happens. On the other side, while that goes on, let's uh, see to our air force problem. Regia Aeronautica. The war in Abyssinia allowed us for the first time to use our air force in times of war, the latter having been established in 1923. However, many of our aircraft are still quite old, including biplanes, which we will have to modernize. So it gives us a research bonus to scout planes, which are good, and the air doctrines, very good. Yes! So Albania has yielded. The Albanian authorities have agreed to our demands, and King Zog has been forced to abdicate. From now and until the end of time, Albania shall be Italian. A glorious day indeed. So basically, uh, despite King Zog no longer being in control, they have yielded to our demands and have been allowed to be annexed. Thank you. So we just foiled the plan of the allies there to get a foothold. Or here, we might actually be able to release him as such. Release as puppet. Boom. King Zog is back on the throne as a puppet to the Italians. Keep their cool flag. So let's see, with the Second Republic they're going for, they will have a large bonus to their industrial capacity. That's fine. The way I see it, they could join the Allies only if they are independent. They can't join a common term. That's on their side. Create factions, we don't care. So this part of the tree should be uh, eliminated. However... 
they may still be able to attack us. Anyway, hopefully they won't go into a focus that'll make them uh, break off from us. Because I'd like to keep King Zog in control there. He's a pretty cool guy. Uh, next, let's see to this little Republic of Austria if we can gobble it up somehow. Maybe without going to war. Daily fascism support. Very nice. We have our first camel divisions appearing, which is great. We'll be putting them into the... Let's call them the World the African Legion. And if I'm not mistaken, there was... Yeah, this guy right here. He's... He's got Desert Fox, however, ooh. We're here, we don't care. Reckless isn't terrible, but uh, minus 25% experience gain is something I never like. However, Desert Fox is not to be uh, underestimated. Sure, let's give him a try. Commanding. So we're gonna uh, form a line here for a potential and eventual offensive in Northern Africa. Pronto all'azione. All right, we have 150 political power yet again. What shall we go for today? Personality cult would be good since it will give us a passive um, fascism support and we are not 100% fascist. Let's go for that. Minus 25% uh, justify war goal time is nice too. All right, that done. Let's start boosting fascism in Austria. June 1943. Yikes, it's going to take some time for them to vote. I wonder if they'll do a referendum on their own. All right, we researched the rocket artillery. Let's improve our anti-tanks. Let's also put a little bit... There's a little bit of rocket artillery in the line here, so we don't forget about it. We'll get, the back, uh, we'll get back to that later. So now what we want to do is grab all the old rifles and uh, convert them to better rifles. It will make us produce them much quicker, and it will give uh, better weapons for our soldiers. Let's get the improved computer machine for a huge 8% bonus to research speed. Hmm, it seems that Eastern Poland has ceded their territories to the USSR. The Eastern ones, at least. It's unfortunate for them. There might be a friend to be made in Poland. Centralized fire control is good. Now let's get forward observers. Use that... Uh, increase in research speed that we got earlier. Alright, Regia Aeronautica is done, but now we're gonna have these prompts for the Provisional Government of Somali and Eritrea. So these two states here aren't too interesting for us. They have no factories, but they have a very large uh, native population, at least uh, Somalia does. So what we're gonna do is that we are gonna make a collaboration government in the state of Eritrea and the Somali Republic. Boom. Now we got two more puppets to our name. And they will be going through their own focus trees and they'll be training their own armies and using focuses to uh, create various um, factories in their state as well. So they're going to really develop these tiles as well. And one trick also is to do so, let them run through their tree, increase their industrial power, and then what you do is that you just re-annex them later by reducing their autonomy. Now let's go with our next focus. Let's go for the Breda BA-65. That's a close air support plane and we use these a lot. Advanced versions of the BA-64. The BA-65 was designed by Antonio Paromo and Giuseppe Panzeri. Like his predecessors, it is designed to fulfill several roles, in particular as a fighter, a reconnaissance aircraft, but above all as a ground attack aircraft. A dive bomber. Those are fun. All right, let's do some paramilitary training here. Okay, now that we can... Let's help our boys out and make two military factories in each of their uh, countries. That way they're going to be able to work on fielding some troops. Because if not, they don't even have some uh, military factories to their name. So let's help them out. One thing I would like to do also is to start a land lease. Let's give them um, a thousand guns, just once. And let's say 25 convoys. Do the same with Somali line here. There we go. That'll help them field a small basic force 
and uh, they'll be probably giving those divisions straight to us afterwards. Pronto, Everybody wins. So Venezuela has capitulated, unfortunately. They will not be able to supply us with oil, but that's alright. I think we'll be coming independent in terms of fuel soon enough. Get excavation 3. Always good. Gives more resources and gives an opportunity to drill for more. Brazil has joined the common term. Interesting. So a large part of the planet is becoming socialist. That worries me a little bit. Let's improve our artillery even more, even though it's ahead of time. All right, as an example of why I like to make puppets, let's go see our boy Rhodes over here. Now, I don't remember how many factories they had before, but they've unlocked 13 or 25 slots here, and they have six naval dockyards, two military factories, and five civilian factories only on this tiny tile. That is impressive for such a small nation. Now, that's because they've been running through their entire tree here, increasing their industry, getting more research slots. Basically, they're doing a good job. All right. That being said, the timer's been running for quite a while in this episode. I'm going to have to leave it here. Not too much action in this episode, but there is a storm gathering in front of us. We are doing a little bit of political machinations here, trying to get more people under our sphere of influence, getting some collaboration governments and whatnot, and also seeing how we are going to fit in the world stage in the days to come. The world is our oyster. So until then, take care, everybody. Wash your hands, take it easy, and have a good one. I know.